Let's jiggle, flap, and feather it out. So here we are in the library. This is one of our most recent projects here at the Deanery. And we're using it as a demonstration for many different finishes that are possible. Um, first of all, on this wall, we've used uh, locally sourced clay rich soil. Uh, behind the plaster that you see here is something called light straw clay that we'll look at more in depth um, in another part of the show. Um, but this beautiful sort of tawny colored uh, color to this to this particular clay is really just mud dug from either our property or just up the road. We've added some uh, bits of chopped straw to it so when I when it completely dries and it, you can see up here it's not totally dry up above it will reflect out the, the bits of straw so I can spray this down and, and you can see how the, the straw starts to come to the, the surface. And we can go back and, and compress it, finish it up again if we want. We can brush it out. There's lots of things you can do to, to get the finished surface that you're looking for. This is a really rough surface. I use um, what we call a, a skip trowel finish um, because I wanted it to look rough kind of like it comes from from right from the, the, the earth. Um, it's also nice to go back and, and use your hand just to, to give that a, a bit of a finish at the end. We've added a little bit of wheat paste into the finished plaster on this one and so that helps to minimize the dusting. That's something that I add into all of our, um, our finish layers of, of clay clay plaster, whether it's purchased clays and sands that we've bought from the pottery store, or if it's locally clay rich soil that we've dug up, screened and um, added water to and put it on the wall. We, um, we, we had a lot of fun with this particular wall. We added some bent wood um, into, the, the, this is a stud frame wall so we've added some bent wood pieces into where the, the studs were and created those arches and um, then just plastered over that. But this is kind of a, an interesting way if you've just got a, a regular stick frame wall and you want to create your own uh, finishes onto that without having used to use drywall or anything else. So we've put light straw clay on and then a plaster over top of it with the behind this uh, is just the studding. And we've embedded in it as well some uh, some glass bottles. So you have to get everybody drinking blue is our go-to. You get special points if you bring in blue bottles around here. But they're all they're all beautiful. And, um, and they're like little jewels in the wall. So this is another example of the kinds of systems and finishes that we're having fun with here in the library. And what we've done, again, we've just got a section of um, regular stick frame construction, a couple of studs here. We've added a piece of live edge um, wood on one side. You always need to have something to plaster up to, a plaster stop so that you can finish it. We're going to run another plaster stop, a beautiful piece of our aqua salvaged wood trim on the side here when, uh, as we move along here a bit more. But this is a, a cordwood cobweb construction system that we're modeling here. We've used small pieces of, of softwood that we've cut into sections that are going to that are as deep as we want them to be within that uh, four inch frame that the, that the two by fours create. And we've, uh, we've layered some mud in behind and then we set those those pieces of cordwood into it and we've used other things as well to um, 
make this a really playful, fun, colorful piece of work. Uh, we've got little bits of tile over here. There's this piece of rock, a special stone that um, one of the children had right here. And when they come back, they're not here with me today, but when, when they're back, they'll get to polish these, all these things up. This is kind of our children's corner, it's going to be. And so we've also inserted into the wall these uh, bits of these jars. So we've just got small jars with that the lids can come off. We can hide little treasures in there for the kids or the kids can use them for their own treasures. We've got a bicycle wheel that's forming a, a frame in it. And here we've got a, a bit of a, a, a chandelier that uh, came to us probably 30 years ago and has been waiting for the perfect place for it to reside and it's going to have a place of considerable import in this wall. We've got more and more bottle up there that I'm going to show you how that works and we'll, we'll put in a little piece of tile or two just so you can see how those fit into, a, into the mud. The trick with the, the tiles or any small bits and pieces is that you want to make sure that the, uh, the mud comes right up around the edges of it so there's nothing sharp left. Because really all we're looking for is, is color. Right, I'm going to climb up on a ladder. So I'm just giving this final little mush before I put it up because it's been sitting out all night and dried out a bit so I added a bit more water. So here we've got our clay rich soil that we just mixed up in the wheelbarrow. You can see there's some straw in it. And that's the beauty of these materials is that um, they're not curing, they're just drying. So if it gets hard, you can just um, add a bit of water, as much water as you need to for the purpose that you're about to um, ask it to, to perform. So we're just gonna pack it in here again. I'm using my, my whole fingers, hands to, to work it, and I'm not overworking it. You don't want to overwork it because that pulls the water to the surface and it will cause it to actually crack a bit more if you, if you do that. So this is just a quick little demo of what you can do with the tiles. Um, lovely blue piece of broken ceramic. Put it in wherever you want it. Give it a little jiggle again to seat it into where you want it to be. And then make sure that you're, you're going to bury it in the mud. And it's really easy to get... It's, it's very easy to get it really perfect. And this is a very rough stage of the, uh, the wall right now, you can see. We haven't gone back and put any kind of finishing or cleaning up on this. So really I just want to put it in, make sure that it's well seated, covered over, and I'm going to leave it. And when it comes time to sponge it out, it's so easy. It's just a little bit of a damp cloth or a sponge and, and it's, uh, it's brilliant. We're just going to reveal this buddy here. Look at that. I'd forgotten he was in there. The beauty of all these things working with the mud is if we want to we can just you know flip out a piece you want to change it um, you, know, you can add in more you can go back 10 years later change the whole thing so easily so we can then we really like that really that beautiful piece of blue. So you just want to remember about anchoring it a bit. So I'm going to put this one back over here. So scrape that a bit. Just set that on. I've got a really strawy bit here of mud, but set it on. Build it out. A 
we're in love with Gaudi-esque shapes and colors and materials. Once that's dry, then you can go back and level it or build it, frame it, do whatever you want.